Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored Never Boring. This week I have had a bit of a splurge on Blackstone Fortress. And if you've watched my previous two videos, you will know that I have already done unboxing slash review type things of the new expansion Trades Command and the new expansion card decks, Advanced Arsenal and Endless Peril. And in those videos, as well as unboxing and reviewing the contents, I talk a little bit about things where I think it doesn't quite live up to its potential. Um... And this kind of segues into today's video because at the same time as receiving these expansion packs, I also received my July issue of White Dwarf magazine, which has the second part of a special Blackstone Fortress scenario. It started in the June issue and it, it finishes in this month's July issue. And that expansion mission is incredibly good. Um, it's a really interesting new take on providing a cinematic adventure that works slightly differently to how the adventures work in the core game of Blackstone Fortress. So um, I'm going to talk about that White Dwarf content in a moment. But first of all, I'm going to do a little bit of a run up. Let's get this out of the way. So normally in a game of Blackstone Fortress, um, you're, you have explorations that involve these cards. These cards are from the core set, so don't worry about me um, spoiling any contents of the expansions. I'm not. These are core set cards. Um, and exploration cards fall into two main categories. They have combats, they have challenges. And you randomise a selection of these and you flip them over one at a time to resolve them. And I've mentioned in previous videos that I find the challenges very interesting, but they don't quite create enough of a cohesive narrative of the Blackstone Fortress yet for my liking. They're, some of them are quite interesting, but they're all one-shot scenarios. It's like you walk into a room, this happens, you resolve this situation, on you go. There's no persistent effects. There's no, now add this to your deck and this will happen next time. Um, there's no no sense of, of it building a, a larger narrative other than revealing these small interesting things that can happen um and the rest of them uh the the uh, exploration cards are these combat cards where you set up the map and you have a battle with with in, in a regular sort of tabletop style miniatures game the problem with the combat cards is they're pretty much all the same i mean they they change the the floor plan but you are using the same floor plans from the core set every time and you're just placing uh, enemies and fighting them and then attempting to get out. You have to summon an elevator and escape. So they're pretty much the same and there's no special rules or anything like that. Um, and this continues until you achieve the objective of the, the scenario you're playing, which at the moment, they're all pretty much the same. Um, the core set mission, the traitor command mission and the dreaded amble mission all involve um, going around exploration cards until you find X amount of a specific type of object. Once you have found X amount of specific type of object, you can tackle what they call the strongholds. Um, and the expansions only have one stronghold each, but the, um, the core set has a series of strongholds to tackle. And the strongholds are combats that have their own little separate entry they have the in the expansions they have like a separate little pamphlet that explains how they work because you don't just get a battle plan you get complete set of special rules special objectives um you, you may have to like move items around seal things off open things up um there's there's like weapon emplacements traps things that aren't on the combat cards um sometimes you get special events that event tables to roll on um, specific types of monsters so that are more in keeping with the narrative of the mission that you're playing um, so it's not just a random vanilla combat the strongholds are, are pretty much they're the most interesting thing and as, as they always come at the end of a mission they are sort of more suitably cinematic they are the finale of your of your endeavors so they are there's a little bit extra to them um, and those are cool and the White Dwarf mission, um, which actually requires the Amble expansion to play, or a, a proxy miniature and a few a few tokens and things, and uh, access to the stats for the Amble, um, 
takes that idea of the cinematic stronghold finale um, to the next level because it's a, a special scenario in which there are predefined stages. There are seven stages to it. There were four in the June issue of White Dwarf and the remaining three in the July issue of White Dwarf. And it creates a full continuing narrative. The idea is um, there's a sealed chamber that no one can get into. Um, but an amble could burrow its way inside. So the heroes are tasked with finding an amble, stealing its eggs um, to lure it to the sealed chamber and then get it to dig its way into the chamber so that they can then go in, grab the loot and get out. All the while being harried by the forces of chaos who are kind of in the way as like a, a, a third faction force. Um, and... Although there's a couple, there's a couple of challenges that, that are like this. Um, most of the stages are combats, but they're not these vanilla combats. Each of the combats is like a sort of mini stronghold combat um, with special rules and things like that. I'm going to show you the stages from the July issue of White Dwarf. Um, it's not really a spoiler as such because if you're going to play those this that scenario yourself then you will see those those stages but if you want to um deal with them one step at a time and you don't want to be spoiled as to what's coming in the campaign you haven't got that far yet or whatever um i'm going to put a, a timestamp down in the comment section so that you can skip ahead to to my next point but right now i'm going to i'm just going to show um the the three combat stages in the july issue of white dwarf so here we have stage five. And as you can see, it's got a map layout. It's got um, enemies already positioned. Um, and this is a really exciting cinematic combat because at this stage, um, this is the entrance to the sealed chamber, or well, this is where the sealed chamber is going to have an entrance once the amble has burrowed its way in. The heroes have deposited the eggs of the amble inside the chamber through little vents that are in the side, and the amble is currently trying to plow its way through this wall. Um, but at the same time, the forces of chaos have arrived, and obviously the amble um, treats any characters on the board as enemies. It's, it's a, a neutral creature that's just a big old ball of rage so the heroes are basically trying to fend off the chaos forces while the amble digs stopping the amble from getting distracted and going off on the rampage killing the other chaos forces and also staying out of the way of the amble itself so it's a really interesting situation where they're just trying to keep keep it the amble separate from the bad guys so it can do what it's doing and um the amble gets a special um behavior table which has lots of burrowing rules in it which actually inflicts damage on this wall to eventually break through um there are special events there's a special event table and it's a really interesting cinematic uh concept you can imagine the heroes like desperately fending off this wave of chaos um while the amble is you know occasionally just turning around and swatting an enemy that gets too close and, you know, if the amble gets taken down, that's it, mission over. So it's not just about, you know, staying alive yourself, it's about keeping the amble alive too, which is very cool, very interesting. Um, and then, once the amble gets inside, you go to stage six. And stage six, you have to follow the amble into an incredibly small chamber. Look how small it is. The amble is here, you are here. You have to collect your... your stuff and get out and the amble is kicking off the am the amble gets a very small behavior table um and there is a special event table as well um to to deal with the fact that you're in a small confined area and then if you survive that and get back out you go back to the to the map that you had here it's the same map except now it's got an escape route down here but it's the same map you come back out and now it's a running gun because all the traitor for all the the chaos traitor forces are turning up um they're you know getting in the way you've got to escape you've got to battle your way through and get out it's a, a proper you know final final reel of the movie all you know guns blazing run for the exit running gun really exciting um and yeah, and then that completes the narrative. And if you do that, you get some special rewards and things which I won't go into. So that is a really, really interesting um, take on how to do um, 
a scenario, an, uh, an expedition in Blackstone Fortress, which deviates from... These are the two issues you need, by the way, if you want to get this mission. Um, June and July. Um, but yeah, this, it's a really interesting new take on creating a an exciting narrative cinematic adventure and for me this is actually one of the best things that they have done for Blackstone Fortress. Um, I don't dislike the way that Blackstone Fortress works, um, I, I, you know the, the randomization of the, the missions to then go on to the strongholds, that's a good concept, um, but uh, and this was something that was highlighted with the Endless Peril um, card expansion this chap here. Um, this pack of cards included 15 new combat cards but again all of those combat cards were basically just vanilla battle plans with no special rules or anything so you're not getting that cool cinematic narrative flavor that you're getting from the strongholds or from this mission in White Dwarf and it's made me realize that I think what would be a really fantastic thing to do for Blackstone Fortress is to have more scenarios that have special objectives, special event tables that are keyed into that objective. Not necessarily ones that um, that string together into, into full narrative adventures like this one, but imagine if when you were making your, your exploration deck, um, you, you put your challenge cards in and then you put in combat cards that were just numbered. Or, or, or even just said combat on them. Um, and then when you drew a combat card, you had to refer to a scenario book, which had a series of one-shot stronghold type missions. Um, some of them could be quite simple, run and gun things. Some of them could be, you found a chamber with several switches. You have to switch them all before you can get out. Um, just things that give you objectives, something beyond shoot the bad guys, get to the elevator, something to spice up those combats and I mean I don't need any more combat plans that don't add new rules or anything at this stage um, with the the ones from the core set and then the 15 more from Endless Peril and then obviously Traitor Command and, and Dreaded Amble have their own special combat cards as well that you use and then some of those can actually be put back into your core set once you've completed those scenarios so I've got loads and loads of these plans but they're not really bringing anything new the White Dwarf campaign brought something new. It brought a series of stronghold missions together to create a cohesive and exciting story um, with a really strong cinematic finish. Um, and if you could take that and just condense those down into single battles, if you could take those events and just have one-shot scenarios, I think it would be one of the best things that could happen for Blackstone Fortress is a just a book of one-shot combats that have something above and beyond just set up the bad guys, kill them and escape. Um, so many ways that you could just have, have a battlefield that can also, um, even without being part of a larger narrative structure, they could create story elements that reveal more about the Blackstone Fortress. You go into a chamber, there's a machine there, you need to find the parts to reactivate the machine and then the machine does something. Um, you know, it summons things, um, activates spindle drones or something. Um, maybe you find a spindle drone factory um, and you can you can deactivate the spindle drones in an area and then that might give you a benefit um in your next combat if you draw spindle drones maybe they don't get reinforcements or something that there, there has to be um i you know I'm, I'm not knocking the random mission creation stuff it's also very good the random mission creation stuff for if you're just going to do a standard one shot dungeon dive um because the core set rules for blacks and fortress do have rules for just you're not playing a narrative you're not playing a, a full expedition you just want to do a one shot go into the dungeon kill some bad guys and the card draw thing is fine for that and the card draw thing is also fine to a certain degree um in preparation for building up to those stronghold challenges but i just think it maybe maybe even if not every single combat gave you a stronger narrative thing to achieve but i just think there are so many ways that you could make the Blackstone Fortress combat encounters much more interesting by giving specific objectives, 
um, special scenarios, you know, it, a, a chamber that just has a different event table um, is you know, a massive thing in itself. You go into an area and maybe it's got electrified defenses, things like that. It's things that can that can build the theme, build the narrative. Because for me, the Blackstone Fortress's strongest thing is its theme. And it does have a cool narrative in that, you know, the heroes go to Precipice, they set out on their expeditions, they gather their stuff, they go back, they trade it with people on, on Precipice. The people on Precipice use the equipment to make better weapons and things like that, and then you can go back in and you're constantly searching for the most amazing secret loot that you can find on the Blackstone Fortress. And it's a cool idea. Um, but I just, I, I feel now we're getting to the stage where something like a scenario book or something, um, and of course it, 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 it would be something that would take quite a lot of work. You know, you have to, you have to build scenarios and you have, they have to work. And if you're going to give them the special event tables um, and give enemies special behavior tables that relate to the scenario, it, you know, I, I appreciate this. Not something they can knock up as quickly as they could knock up that, but I think it's something that I would certainly appreciate just to layer in that extra depth and, and you know, do, do more of the cool stuff that this White Dwarf scenario is bringing to the table. Um, but I guess that's, that's all I've got to say on that, really. I would be interested to know what other people think. I mean, whether other people think that the vanilla combat encounters are, are more than good enough as, in, as and then just broken up occasionally by stronghold events. Um, if anybody's played through the White Dwarf scenario, the uh, the sealed chamber two-parter, um, I would be interested to know what people think of that as well. I thought it was absolutely excellent um, and really showed what can be achieved with carefully constructed combat encounters rather than just having all the time those generic ones and, and i guess that's why i shot this video was one to to let people know that the white dwarf uh, magazines are worth picking up if you haven't done so um grab them while you can um but also just to share my thoughts and see see if i'm alone in this um as always thank you for listening um please leave your comments and queries below and i will do my best to respond and until the next time bye bye everyone Bye-bye.